I had it officially done in December and I did it because I just had enough of the line. I didn't like the, I didn't like the way the line was always there as a reminder of dialysis. I like to leave dialysis and forget all about it and having a fistula, you don't know it's there. I am very happy with it. It's pretty easy for me to live with this. This is easy for daily life. No problem to take a shower, no problem to uh, go to the, to, 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 to the swimming pool and this is really, 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 really fantastic. I mean, that's his patient. This is the new fistula. It's the old one, take away put the new one in. Very happy. So what Valerie had was a slightly more complex fistula operation. And you can see on the arm here that normally the straightforward fistulas come up the arm over here. And it's a, a one-stop operation. However, with Valerie here, she didn't have a good vein that, uh, that traversed the arm up this way, but she had a vein called the basilic vein that lies hidden along the inside of the arm underneath the biceps muscle. And you'll see there's a scar here which is healing very nicely and this was the scar for the second stage operation to elevate the fistula. And if you can feel along here, the fistula is buzzing away nicely over here and this is not far off in actual fact from being needled. And what this means now is that Valerie can start her dialysis without using a central venous catheter. She's got the fistula here ready and waiting for her and that is the ideal situation. I've had two operations. The first one I had a local anaesthetic and Jeremy spoke to me the whole time through. And the second one I had to have a general, but I came round very, very quickly after and I was fine. And all I really wanted was a nice cup of tea and something to eat. Once the fistula has been created, there are actually only a very few simple things to look out for. The important thing is to look at the wound and make sure it doesn't become red or painful because that might be signs of an infection. But that doesn't happen very often. The other thing I tell my patients is that they should get a, a, an old pair of socks and squeeze them hard just to increase the blood flow into the hand and it encourages the growth of the fistula. Sometimes fistulas can become large with time and Samir here has what we call an aneurysmal fistula. And you can see this is, this is very, very large and she's only got a tiny arm and this is one end of a spectrum. This is not the normal situation. However, the important thing is, is that no renal patient should have an aneurysm on their arm of this size. It's unsightly and it's not nice and so I'm going to remove it for her. And my aim here is that this lady has got um, a functioning transplant and actually doesn't need to have this uh, fistula here. So what my aim here is to operate on this, it's a short general anaesthetic, remove in its entirety this, this fistula and reconstruct the artery that's providing blood to the fistula, then do a little bit of plastic surgery and bring the skin together and all being well we'll have the arm back to normal again exactly like the other arm. My name is Jane Bowles and I had a kidney transplant back in 1989 and then unfortunately it failed so I went on hemodiasis and had a fistula made. So then I, I was lucky enough to have another transplant so I didn't need the fistula anymore. So um, I was able to have it taken away. The fistula used to come down quite large in the squiggle so it has now been taken away by these two scars. You can hardly see it, it's virtually the same as my other arm. <laughs>